What is going on, traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Trader. Interesting week, very interesting week in the markets. A lot of things hitting all time highs. You see Tesla here going above a thousand, Microsoft hitting all time highs at 196. You have the NASDAQ hitting above 10,000 all time highs again, which is crazy. Earlier this week, it seemed like we couldn't lose. I mean, all of our trades were working. We had a crazy swing on Beyond Meat. This rallied about 21% on Monday. We bought at the support here where it was trading sideways for about a week, showing some strength with the Golden Cross. A lot of volatility in the markets means all of our option plays were just going insane it seemed like every single iron condor was doing well closed the tesla one at 70 percent a zoom iron condor at 82 percent and nicola one closed that yesterday at 72 percent the chewy option which we opened just yesterday closed it today for 90 percent up so when iv is high when implied volatility is high and you could check this on any platform this right here is tasty works and you'll see the iv rank here when iv is high and you are a seller of options you can usually get a healthy premium for that option and if if the iv just goes down you see here nicola's iv is at 48 yesterday it was trading in in the hundreds the day before i think it was like in the 200s so any option or option strategy that that you were a net seller of this iv drop here automatically made you money and if you want access to all these calls link is in the description below i send all these options trades out in our private trading group so sign up if you want access to that and if you want to learn how to trade options and want one-on-one -on -one time with me i take a handful of people every month but hit me up on the discord or sign up i max out for june so the next round of openings will be in july and those spots go really fast so sign up on the first if you want to engage on one-on-one -on -one training with me all right let us get into the market analysis and then i'll go over a few other plays i want to talk about latam airlines as well this stock was delisted it's funny because i had initially bought latam airlines when it it popped above the 21 ema here made about 40 to 50 percent on this got greedy bought back again and then last night it was uh delisted from the american exchanges and it is now only on the otc exchange and it is currently trading i think at around two dollars but that is the biggest airlines in south america so there still could be a long-term opportunity there after they go through their bankruptcy and restructure their deal all right let us take a look at the spy and let's see where the market could be headed so we're finding some resistance here about three to four day resistance at about the three 323 322 level and you can see that we are slightly overbought on the rsi as well on the spy and once we crossed above the 0.786 fib level here and this uh you know this resistance level which we didn't spend much time at then all-time highs were inevitable and i still think that reaching all-time highs were less than what six percent away i mean that is the most likely move now there is no reason why we wouldn't get there now it doesn't mean that we won't see a correction thereafter remember a correction is a move of about 10 percent or more but but not quite a bear market which is you know a drop of about 20 percent this however is a legitimate bull market right this is an increase of more than 20 percent after a drop of more than 20 percent so this is a bull market right here so in my view i think we will hit it's inevitable that they will hit that 338 eventually whether it's next week or or in three weeks i don't know but we will eventually hit that 338 only because i it's inevitable and there's really no other resistance levels uh coming between us and that like i said the nasdaq hitting all-time highs today now this one is, is probably due for a correction uh, you know only because we, we hit all-time highs and it, this this trend just looks crazy as we all know the 21 ema which on my chart is the white line i call this the great equalizer it's usually the area where we see stocks fall to after such a big rally and if you look you look at a number of stocks in in different industries look at disney today we saw a retracement uh to the 21 ema on the four hour if you look at save we saw a retracement to the 21 ema on the four hour as well if you look at a company like zoom uh, on the daily you see retracements to the 21 ema sometimes the 50 ma but for uptrends the 21 ema whether you're looking at the four hour or the one day is usually a a good mean point to shoot for after rallies it has to revert to the mean before rallying again as long as it's still on the uptrend so looking on the nasdaq i mean i definitely wouldn't short this because you're shorting momentum and there's really no resistance level here since we're at all-time highs i would essentially wait until the 21 ema is is hit right when it starts retracing and then 
then I would buy something like QQQ, which is the ETF that, that tracks the, the NASDAQ. I would buy that uh, at that point. All right, so you missed the bottom on the stock market, right? I, I did a video about a month and a half ago saying, you know, there are still some things that, that you can buy. And at that time, Google was was really a an undervalued stock. And Google is now close to all-time highs. But back when I said that, Google was around the 50 moving average. And I said that Google wasn't following its other... Uh, you know, cousins or partners in the in the tech industry, and it was still it was not moving as fast as say Apple or Microsoft was. So there was a very good opportunity to to buy Google at that point, and you would have been up, you know, eighteen or nineteen percent since then. Exxon Mobil was was another one. This one, you know, at the time that I made that video. It was down around the 50 MA as well. A bunch of the healthcare stocks too. If you look at, at like United Health, at, in that video I said healthcare, banks, and energy sector, right? United Health is now busting through all-time highs. And that was a month and a half ago. So what can you buy now? Well, there's still some really beat up sectors. Uh, the one that, that I'll go over is the, the the mortgage trust, right? Like the mortgage industry. So if you look at this, and, and this was a something like IVR. This was super stable before the crash. I mean, if you look at, at, at how tight this range is, right? Like if you pull up something like a, a regression trend, like you'll see that it's, it's literally just a parallel channel. So when you go from something that that has been trading this tightly to a massive crash you know that this this right here is an anomaly and it was an, based on the expectation that the mortgage industry you know would take a hit because people would be out of jobs and they wouldn't be able to pay their mortgages but we know with all these stimulus programs and and these easing programs coming out of uh, the fed and the government that they are helping people pay mortgages they're helping people defer their mortgages they're helping mortgage companies themselves so i think this industry is still really at a low point and a good opportunity for the long term so something like ivr or the other one is uh is mitt if you look at MIT, same same industry, and the stocks really look very similar. You could see how tight it was trading before the crash. Very consistent trade. So if you tried to buy this, you know, before the crash, you would probably not have made much because of how consistent it was trading. So when I see something like this, I definitely want to jump in for the long term. A lot of banks are still beat up. Yeah, we made some good gains on some swing trades, but if you look at Wells Fargo, it hit resistance here. It's still trading at, at a low point. Now you might have to hold these for a very long time. So I don't want to give you the illusion that you can get rich overnight trading mortgage stocks or, or banks. Airlines are the other one, right? After a lot of hype last week saying that, you know, airlines were, were receiving a record number of reservations, at least compared to what they had initially intended, you could see a drop in, in Spirit Airlines, you could see a drop in, in JetBlue. And these are things that, that I definitely want to take advantage of. Now, not to say I would go all in here, there's still a chance that we could retrace back to this, this sideways range here, right? Depending on if we see a second wave as states start to reopen or, or whatnot, there's still a chance that we can trade back into the this range, at which point I would be a heavy buyer. But I would definitely get into something like JetBlue or Save here. Save, actually, we did get into this morning and made a quick 10% on after it retraced to the 21 EMA. That's when I jumped in. I always talk about fading the market, right? Basically buying when everyone else is selling. So as this is dropping and people are offloading their shares, here's where I come in looking to buy their shares. And I want to be a seller into these rallies. So yes, you might have missed the bottom on, on Microsoft. You might have missed the bottom on Apple, Tesla, which we'll get into in a second. Those things will likely not drop to their, you know, pandemic lows. It's just a, it's just a fact. If you missed it, you might have missed it. I mean, if you, if you take a look at like Microsoft's uh, chart, same thing, you know, would have happened to you in, in the previous crashes, right? So if we take a look at, at say, like the, the weekly, and you look back to uh, 2009, for instance, when Microsoft dropped to, you know, that's insane. Microsoft was $15. <laughs> but when it dropped to, to 15 bucks, you never saw that price again. It There are times when it will just pass you by. And during this crash here, you know, Microsoft dropped to 130 bucks. Evidently, that's around the time that we started buying the week of the stimulus. But it is realistic, especially with Microsoft's fundamentals being so good, and they actually were unaffected by the pandemic. It's realistic that Microsoft will never see this price again. So you either start dollar cost averaging, or you wait until a retracement to one of the smaller moving averages like the 21 EMA. If we see a retracement back to around 185, then you might buy in a little more heavily. But it is very realistic that that, you know, if you did not buy this 
the crash on some of these blue chip stocks, you completely missed it. And that is just a fact that you have to live with if you're going to be trading. Tesla, again, hit all time highs today. This is crazy. Um, you know, it's, it's above a thousand, actually not crazy. If you look at some of the, the videos that I posted before, I was saying that, that Tesla is, you know, easily going to be a thousand dollar stock at some point. Obviously I didn't think it would be still during the, the pandemic, you know, I was thinking years down the line maybe, but it's crazy to think that it was at 350 just a few weeks ago. So the reason it's up so much is a couple of reasons, but one, it announced their, uh, what the hell is this? <laughs> oh, this is an ad. It announced their, uh, their million mile battery or it didn't announce a million mile, mile battery but that's the expectation in the industry now right so during its battery day it's expected that or, or that, that it would announce the the million mile battery which would just be a game changer not only for electric vehicles but for any vehicle when is the last time you heard of a vehicle hit a million miles and the second reason is because it announced uh, that it was accelerating the semi. And this is obviously for, due to the competition that it's getting from Nikola Mort Motors. And this could be really a death knell to, to Nikola. As we know, Tesla is a much bigger company and can scale a lot more significantly than, than Nikola can. So it can actually accelerate the production of its semis. It can be the first to market. It can produce uh, you know, the semi with better materials. So interesting to see what, what it would do to Nikola's price here, which just went ape, ape shit earlier this week. And the volatility was so crazy that, that our option play, we sold the 40, 45 put spreads for like a dollar fifty an options contract, which was insane because, you know, it traded all the way up to, to the 90s. And when I saw that, I couldn't believe we were getting that much premium for that options contract. Ended up closing that for 90%, even though we would have got 100% if it expired above 45 by Friday. But, you know, the additional 10% I was willing to let go of in order to, to pocket the the profits in case we saw Nikola just tank, which was very plausible on, you know, these new stocks that, that have a lot of hype behind them. Another thing that you can get into is emerging markets and foreign markets. We bought EWZ uh, pretty cheap, up about 20% on EWZ. This is an ETF that tracks the large and mid-cap companies in, in Brazil, but you know, still far away from its pre-pandemic uh, trading range, as well as something like EEM, which is a, a another emerging market ETF. This one I wouldn't buy here. I would actually wait for a retracement to potentially the 21 EMA before buying just because it's, it's trading really high right now. And lastly, I want to check on our Deutsche Bank uh, trade. So if you're not familiar, uh, I basically take trade ideas in the comment section at the beginning of the month and I randomly pick a comment and enter that trade. And someone, the, the comment that I picked said, you know, go all in on Deutsche Bank. So this account I have set up specifically just for that. And that trade is currently up to uh, around 2%, so 17 bucks. By the end of the month, regardless of what the profit is, you know, it could be 10%, it could be 1000%, whatever it is, I'm going to give, you know, the, the profits to the person whose comment I pick. And they still haven't got back to me, by the way. So if there is significant profit here, and he or she hasn't got back to me, I will then pick a random user and give them those profits. And this news just came in, but the Fed says that interest rates will remain near zero through 2022. As you see these guitar ads going crazy, you know what I've been shopping for if you see these ads. Yes, I know I can turn the ad blocker on, but I actually like pictures of guitars, so I'm leaving it on. Uh, but the Fed says that uh, interest rates, th th that the interest rates near zero will remain till 2022, and they're going to continue purchasing assets. And by assets, uh, I assume that they mean the high yield corporate bonds in the form of, of ETFs. I haven't read this. Uh, I ha haven't read this article, but I'm assuming that's what they mean. Anyway, that is it for this video. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you get anything out of this video. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on whether Nikola is going to suffer because of Tesla's semi truck production or whether it is a legitimate competitor. So let me know in the comment section below. Do you think Nikola is a legitimate competitor to Tesla or not? Subscribe to the channel. Sign up if you want access to the trading group and the trade alerts. Stay safe out there traders peace